Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. Gerald here with your weather forecast on this Thursday. Hopefully we're all having a wonderful Thursday and we've got a lot to talk about in today's video, including what is shaping up to be quite a historical week ahead for some Americans. And I'll break that down for you, tell you who's going to see some historical weather and who's going to see just some very not fun weather, unfortunately. So uh, if you want to go ahead, you can skip to that now. If you look at the bottom, uh, kind of in the timeline on the video, I have timestamps talking about, or I guess posted uh, on what I'm talking about at each section of the video. So I tell you that now because I'm going to have a pretty long intro here. So again, if you'd like to go ahead and skip ahead, you're not going to hurt my feelings. All right. So now with that out the way, let's go ahead and uh, do some announcements here. So obviously, as you can tell, I'm in a bit of a different background here. I'm back in Charlotte as classes do start back on Monday. So I made the trip on back and that's why I didn't have a video out yesterday. So I do apologize about that, but uh, I'm sure as you can imagine, this took a while to set up behind me. Uh, so another thing with being back in Charlotte is my schedule. I'm really not quite sure what it's going to look like. So uh, the upload schedule might be a bit weird over the next couple of weeks while I just get in a new rhythm of, uh, you know, starting classes back as well as um, having a job and all that, which I'm sure you can imagine class and uh, all that is a pretty big priority in my life. So, you know, please uh, hang in there with me and work with me a little bit as I figure this out. Uh, also, uh, let me know in the comments if you like the kind of background here or the setup I have. I tried to make it, uh, you know, pleasing to the eye. I think it looks pretty good, but definitely let me know in the comments if you think it looks good and, um, you know, as you can imagine, again, this also was a bit of a tricky thing to do. So, you know, if you don't like it, let me know. But I think it turned out pretty good. Uh, with that said, though, again, just the normal other kind of things here. If you haven't already, subscribe. Uh, and uh, if you like the video, definitely like it. So I think that's all of kind of the announcements I can fit into uh, one intro here. So let's go ahead and jump into that weather forecast. So out there uh, right now, we're seeing a whole lot of everything across the Atlantic Basin, including the eastern half of the country, where we also have uh, some other very active weather on go. Going. So again, we have a couple waves out here in the Atlantic that we're looking at and we need to really keep an eye on. Uh, and outside of there, looking back towards home, we have a pretty potent cold front swinging on through from Canada right now. That could fire off some severe weather over the next couple of days. But uh, more importantly, it's going to bring in some very comfortable air for a lot of people. Now, one more thing you might notice in frame here, it's kind of shoved off to the side is Hurricane Hillary out here way out in the Pacific. And this is what is going to cause some of that historical weather. And we'll talk more about that hurricane uh, here later on in the video. But um, first of all, let's take a look at the continental United States as a whole. And right now, uh, right now, really the rain is not too bad out there. We've got a little bit out here from Michigan, Ohio, and in sections of Indiana, and that will continue to work eastbound and likely flare up some pretty strong storms up into New England uh, going into tomorrow where we will have that severe weather threat. Now, outside of there, it's all dry really everywhere else here east of the Rockies. Uh, we do have some showers back out into the four corners, but uh, really, other than that and what we're seeing up into the Midwest, pretty dry out there. Now, the heat is also kind of tampered down a little bit. Uh, the only heat advisories or excessive heat warnings we have are back down towards Texas and Louisiana and then also back up into the Pacific Northwest. Now, a couple other things to know here is we do have some air quality alerts up into Minnesota and Wisconsin. This all due to wildfire smoke that is uh, going to make a bit of an ugly return with this next cold front that swings on through. Now back out west, uh, you'll notice uh, this kind of cone here going into the west coast. That is from Hurricane Hillary, and again, we'll talk more about that later on, uh, but we already have some flash flood watches up here uh, due to that, as well as some other disturbances we're already seeing back out in that part of the country. So starting with the severe weather threat, uh, tomorrow we do have a marginal risk for major cities like Boston, uh, Hartford, Connecticut. Uh, Providence, Rhode Island, and Long Island. So could see some strong storms. Main threats would be uh, some strong straight line winds and a couple embedded tornadoes possible there tomorrow as well. Uh, so with that, let's go ahead and break uh, down the forecast over the next couple of days. Really, uh, the main kind of thing to look at tomorrow is this cold front as that sweeps on through. So in front of it, we are going to see some showers, but that should really stay uh, north of the Ohio River. And uh, really, again, I think the Northeast is going to be the people to really get the most out of those showers. And you're going to want to enjoy it because uh, this rain might not last uh, for a while. And we could uh, get a real lull for the rain for a pretty extended period of time. So again, this is going into... Uh, tomorrow morning, again, a pretty long, or excuse me, a pretty strong uh, line of storms here rolling on through New England. Uh, again, gusty winds, the main threat with that, but can't rule out a tornado or two. That clears out pretty quickly. Could see a secondary line behind that form in the afternoon if we get enough destabilization. So uh, that's where we would have a bit more of a tornado threat in the afternoon. Uh, again, so watching that. But after tomorrow, that swings on through, and we are all dry for our uh, Friday night and our Saturday afternoon here on the map. You'll notice nothing. Bone dry out there. Um, for 
for just about everyone here east of the Rockies. Now those dew points, this is another really nice thing about this cold front. Uh, look at these nice dew points flooding in. This is going into Friday night. Widespread 40s and 50s for dew points. That is very nice for August. So get out there, enjoy that Friday night, uh, enjoy that Saturday while, uh, excuse me, while we have uh, this very comfortable air mass in place. And uh, going into our Saturday afternoon, that turns into a bit of a backdoor cold front and even oozes down into the mid-Atlantic. So uh, major cities like Charlotte, Raleigh, uh, up through Virginia, through Kentucky, West Virginia could have a really nice nice air in store for our Saturday afternoon but again really don't get used to it and really try to get that out there and enjoy it because it will not last forever so again right now we have this main piece of energy kind of swinging on through the Midwest that will also swing on through the Northeast tomorrow as we have talked about but it's what happens after that that is really unfortunately not going to be a lot of fun for just about anybody here in the East Coast so uh, going into our Sunday and early next week you'll notice this big old blob of red takes over the map this is a very strong ridge uh, and this is gonna be the first of its kind we've really seen this summer for a lot of people this far east in the country obviously we've been dealing with heat for you know, plenty of us down here into uh, Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, but for places really east of uh, the Appalachian chain, we've been spared much of this summer. That's going to change very quickly for us here in the southeast this coming week. So uh, this ridge really builds in and looks to hold on through at least the end of the work week. Now, some of the models have been hinting at maybe you know uh, the idea of a bit of a cold front trying to work back into the northeast uh, later on next work week. That could even potentially ooze down into the mid-Atlantic. We'll have to wait and see, but what I can guarantee you right now is early next week is going to be brutal out there and uh, one way to take a look at that is our temperature map so again this weekend will be pretty comfortable as that cold front moves on through but by the time we get into our Sunday afternoon the heat is on and it will last Sunday afternoon uh, into our Monday afternoon into our Tuesday afternoon Wednesday afternoon here and uh, just look at these temperatures on um Wednesday afternoon we're talking near 20 degrees above normal and whenever it's already the middle of August adding 20 degrees onto that is pretty ridiculous so uh, from the Midwest all the way down to the southeast where we could be even 10 to 15 degrees above normal down here uh, really again spells not a whole lot of fun for a lot of people so next week uh, really make sure you have a way to stay cool stay hydrated uh, because it's really just going to turn dangerous for a lot of folks now again there are some signs maybe the northeast kind of gets a bit of a break maybe they'll uh, be spared a bit uh, from this heat dome as we could see some cold fronts work on through the northeast but outside of there again it is going to be brutal uh, next week for at least the um, work week all right, so uh, another big symptom of that is the lack of rain. The National Weather Service, or I guess the Weather Prediction Center rather, is predicting zilch in the rain department for next week. So uh, this is now through next Thursday, nothing for a whole bunch of people. So Iowa, uh, Missouri, Kentucky, Tennessee, much of the Carolinas, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, absolutely nothing likely to fall out of the sky between now and next week. So again, make sure you're out there watering those plants. Make sure you're staying watered so you know stay hydrated as that is going to be very important for next week now another thing on this map that is going to lead me into the next part of the video just about perfectly is this big area of rain into the desert southwest so again this is all going to be from uh, what is currently Hurricane Hillary and this will be quite historic because this could make landfall out here as a tropical storm in California so um, if I'm not mistaken it's been since 1939 since we've had a tropical cyclone or maybe even a hurricane it might be uh, make landfall down here into California so this is uh, going to be you know a very big possibility and all of that is going to be because of the speed of this thing and the path it takes it's not very often we see these hurricanes curve so far north and just keep on tracking north but uh, thanks to that massive Bridge that we're going to have out here as well as another piece of energy uh, keeping the flow this way a whole bunch of moisture is going to just funnel right up into this corridor and with that hurricane hillary so uh, again uh, this will be very interesting to see unfold right now the um the National Hurricane Center is predicting a tropical storm, probably a mid-grade tropical storm even. So we could see uh, some very gusty winds with this as it rolls on in as well. And potentially, uh, maybe even, you know, a tiny bit of a tornado threat in that northeast quadrant on this thing. So again, normally we're talking about this stuff in the Gulf, but California uh, could be getting in on this. Now, uh, looking at those probabilities, we do have about a 30 to 40% shot of seeing tropical storm force winds for major cities like San Diego and uh, some other communities right here down into uh, extreme south uh, western California there but uh, tropical storm probability map really drops off once it passes Baja California so the winds are not going to be the big story with Hillary here uh, the bigger story will be the rainfall so 
Uh, National Hurricane Center pointing out a moderate risk of flash flooding here uh, for places kind of east of San Diego and Los Angeles here, kind of uh, there along the I-10 corridor there between Yuma and San Diego. So if you live in there, again, really make sure you have a way to get watches and warnings to you because uh, flooding could become a big concern. But that slight risk uh, stretches for a whole bunch of people from Yuma to Las Vegas uh, to Santa Maria, Bakersfield, uh, excuse me, Bakersfield up towards Fresno and includes uh, LA and San Diego. So again, very high population areas here. And uh, the rain, of course, is good, but you don't want too much of it at a time. So again, uh, it looks to be a bit dangerous out there. All right, so switching gears back towards the Atlantic here, we have three areas to watch currently, including two areas that have a medium shot of developing within the next week. So we've got wave one here, wave two here, and wave three that is currently uh, passing the Bahamas and likely to get into the Gulf soon. So we need to watch all three of these. The most uh, kind of current threat obviously would be the one in the Gulf. Uh, the good news with that is the models haven't been too high on it. However, uh, the waters in the Gulf are just so warm right now. We don't want to take any chances and definitely want to keep both eyes on that one. So uh, take a look at our models here and what our model ensembles are showing. We'll start with the GFS model. Again, obviously... Uh, the GFS picking up on these two waves out here, but as for the Gulf wave, uh, GFS doesn't really have much support in its ensembles at all. It mainly has most of its support with these two waves out here, uh, but the good news with the GFS model from this afternoon at least is um, those kind of, you know, curve out to sea mostly. Now we will have to watch out for uh, in kind of the 7 to 10 day period, the Caribbean as our ensembles are hinting at maybe some energy uh, coming up from the Caribbean and could make it into the Gulf, and if it does that, uh, obviously would be a pretty big threat to the United States. But uh, right now, just kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Our Euro Ensemble members are a bit more bullish here. So you'll notice they're a lot more uh, kind of gung-ho on this um, wave out into the Gulf, way more likely for it to develop within our Euro Ensembles. But luckily, that still keeps it relatively weak uh, as that would move into likely Southern Texas. But the other waves, um, the Euro model, very bullish on this wave out here. That is kind of wave one that we looked out. That could get out near the Bahamas here within the next week. And then that wave behind it likely curves out to sea, so we likely wouldn't have to worry about that one, uh, which is some good news. Now, again, the Euro model uh, also is kind of agreeing with the GFS that, hey, maybe, you know, about 10 days out, we could see some energy out here into the Caribbean or Gulf that once again could cause uh, some problems for us folks here in the lower 48. So again, that's what we're looking at right now. Likely to see tropical storm conditions in Southern California. That's pretty crazy in itself, but uh, all of that topped off with extreme heat in the east as well as likely drought conditions to worsen because of that heat and very dry air. So again, we'll definitely watch all of that over the next couple of days. Uh, but until then, have a great rest of your night and I will see you all tomorrow.